this is a short question okay the question is describe the thoraco abdominal diaphragm that is the diaphragm present between the thoracic and abdominal cavity that is called as thoraco abdominal diaphragm under following heads introduction origin of the diaphragm insertion of the diaphragm its nerve supply its blood supply and action thus this indicates that the diaphragm is a muscle which has origin insertion nerve supply and the action and lastly what are the openings in the diaphragm so okay there are major and minor openings are present into the diaphragm we will just learn about the major openings in the diaphragm and the structures passing through these openings okay and then we will learn about the applied anatomy okay we will learn about the applied anatomy okay let us come first to the introduction in the introduction uh, we may write that it is a musculo tendinous partition what do you mean by musculo tendinous that means it is made up of the muscles and then there is a tendon also just like any other muscle there is a belly muscle muscular belly or a flat muscle is there and then it insert at the uh, tendon so it is a musculo tendinous partition so it is a partition where the tendon is in center and on periphery is the muscle and this is a partition between as i said thoracic and abdominal cavities okay above is the thoracic cavity and below is the abdominal cavity thus it is horizontally placed between these two cavity now it has a right dome and the left dome so it is a dome shaped muscle okay and it is the chief muscle for the respiration the thoracic uh, thoraco abdominal diaphragm is the chief muscle for the respiration let us come to the second point and that is the origin of the diaphragm okay origin the origin of the diaphragm is from three different parts okay three different areas or three different sources okay the diaphragm is not from a single uh, i mean to say place where it is taking it is a wide spread origin is there and these origins are then hmm, just given the name as vertebral origin costal origin and third is the sternal origin that means there will be a origin from vertebrae okay the lumbar vertebrae will give the origin to diaphragm then the costal margin the lower six costal cartilage and adjacent ribs okay of the thoracic cage from their inner aspect will give the origin to the diaphragm similarly from the zygoid process our external origin will be there anteriorly let us come first to the vertebral origin okay from where the vertebral fibers of the diaphragm they are taking origin okay now this vertebral origin arises as the right and the left crura right and the left crura okay now this vertebral origin beside the right and the left crura they are also taking origin these fibers from medial and lateral arcuate ligament the third source a uh, source of the vertebral fibers is median arcuate ligament so there are three parts in the vertebral fibers origin okay we will see one by one okay let us see first the hmm, right and left crura if you will see this diagram let me explain this diagram first before we come to the origin uh, from various parts now this is the diaphragm made up of the muscle and there is a centrally placed tendon where all this muscle from periphery they are coming and getting inserted onto this trilobed central tendon okay in the green color is a tendon central tendon where muscle from anterior aspect anterolateral aspect lateral aspect and posterior aspect ultimately they are coming and inserting here this is thus a triangular partition between the thoracic and the abdominal cavity 
Now, here is the lumbar one is hidden behind the uh, aorta. This is the abdominal aorta. Then this is lumbar two and lumbar three vertebral bodies. And in between is the intervertebral disc. This is the 12th rib. Okay, the last rib here, 12th rib. This is the transverse process of L1, the transverse process of L2 and L3. These two are intervertebral discs are seen. Now, as I was saying that it takes origin from right and left crura. So in this green color from the anterolateral aspect of the body and intervertebral disc, these two crura are taking origin. Okay. And on lateral side, there are fibrous arch shaped band is present here. And this is the lateral and the medial arcuate ligament. And here between the two cr crura, this fibrous band is passing, okay, R shaped band. And this is called as the median arcuate ligament. So this was medial and this is median. So these are two different things. This is median in midline and the medial and the lateral arcuate ligament, they are away from this median arcuate ligament. So I was telling you about the vertebral fibers and this vertebral fibers are the right and left crura. Let us come to description of first to the right crura or right crust. The right crust takes its origin from upper three lumbar vertebra, anterolateral aspect of the L1, L2 and L3 vertebral body, anterolateral and the intervening intervertebral disc. So this is the right crust of the diaphragm which is tendinous in origin and then soon it become muscular. So it is musculotendinous origin of the right crust of the diaphragm okay from the body and intervertebral disc and this crust is extending right up to the l3 then the other crust is the left crust and it is shorter because it takes origin from l1 and l2 this was taking on right side but up to l3 the left is only in the upper two lumbar vertebrae and two lateral aspect and the intervening intervertebral disc okay so this left crust also runs upwards okay it is to begin with tendinous shown in green color here then it will become muscular okay it will muscular. so this is the right and this is the left crust of the diaphragm the third vertebral origin is from the medial arcuate ligament. Now this two structure on right side as well. This is the medial arcuate ligament and this medial arcuate ligament takes origin from the body of the second L2. Okay, from the body. See this, this is the origin side. This is the origin from the anterolateral aspect of the body of the first, uh, sorry, second lumbar vertebrae. Okay, it takes origin from the body of second lumbar vertebrae. And then this r shaped fiber goes upwards and laterally to get attached onto the first transverse process of the, I mean, say the transverse process of the first lumbar vertebrae. See here on the left side also taking origin from the anterolateral aspect of the L2 body goes upwards and laterally to gain attachment onto the transverse process of the L1 vertebra and this fibrous band is called medial arcuate ligament and from the upper border of this medial arcuate ligament the fibers muscular fiber will arise for the mm, diaphragm for the diaphragm similarly there is an another ligament that is called as the lateral arcuate ligament on right side as well as on to the left side. Now this lateral arcuate ligament is attached on to the tip of the transverse process of L1 and then its r shaped fibers goes and gets attached on to the hmm, lower border of the 12th rib, lower border of the 12th rib. Okay, so from first lumbar transverse process to the 12th rib. This is the extent of the lateral arcuate ligament on right as well as on to the left side. And from its medial surface, 
Now there will be the origin of the muscle that is will be the part of the diaphragm. Okay, so these are another two sources. That was the right crust, left crust, then medial arcuate ligament on either side and lateral arcuate ligament onto the either side. Now then the fifth origin in the group vertebral group okay is the median arcuate ligament see this green color r shaped fiber this is the let me zoom it little okay this is the median arcuate ligament okay see this median arcuate ligament coming from right towards the left or from left to the right that means between the right and left come crura of the diaphragm there is then r median arcuate ligament right deep to which is passing is the abdominal aorta okay or the descending aorta here and there is the thoracic duct hmm? this is the thoracic duct is also passing right so this is that the fifth Side from where the fibers of the diaphragm will take origin. See these fibers running upward from hmm, crust as well as from the median arcuate ligament. Right and left crust and median arcuate ligament as well as the transverse, I mean see the lateral and median arcuate ligament. Okay, medial, medial and lateral arcuate ligament. So these are the different five hmm, sides from where the hmm, vertebral fibers of the I mean to say diaphragm they will take origin okay the vertebral fibers of the diaphragm we will take origin now the second origin here was the costal origin okay this was the second site of origin was this costal first we have completed the vertebral now coming to the costal origin of this diaphragm now the costal fibers they take origin from lower six costal cartilages that means from 6 to 11 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 um, from their inner aspect okay these i have just drawn here the costal cartilages of the lower six hmm, ribs okay and these fibers they are taking origin from the costal cartilages and adjacent part of the rib okay and from inner aspect these all fibers they are converging or going upwards and towards the inner aspect to gain attachment onto the central tendon okay of the diaphragm so these are the costal fibers so again these are the fibers which are taking origin from lower six costal cartilages and adjacent rib from their inner aspect. Now let us come to the third origin and that is the external origin. Okay, this was the external origin is here and external origin is very short. It is taking origin from the gified process from the hmm, posterior surface of the this is the gypite process the posterior surface of the gypite process where the diaphragmatic fibers they will arise into two slips which will run directly backward to gain attachment onto the central tendon okay onto the central tendon so this is those fibers which are the external head this were the costal head this is the external head okay and this were the vertebral head so these are the three different sources of the fibers hmm, which are taking origin from periphery and then these fibers hmm, they will run okay they will run upwards and medially means towards the center okay? upwards and medially to form the right and the left domes of the diaphragm okay there are the domes of the i will just draw a diagram here this is the right dome go, the, this is the central tendon and then this is the left dome so the right dome is here then central tendon and this is the left dome it means the right dome of the diaphragm is at a higher level as compared to that of the left dome of the diaphragm okay so these fibers run upwards and medially they are running fibers upwards 
Uh, they will run upwards and medially right dome and this is left dome and this is the central tendon of the diaphragm and these fibers they run upwards here from all periphery and towards the center to gain attachment onto the central tendon. So these fibers run upwards and medially to form right and left dome of the diaphragm the right dome and this is the left dome of the diaphragm. Now the medial fibers of the right crust okay, runs to the left to encircle the esophagus. See here, this is the esophageal opening in the diaphragm. Okay? We will learn about all these openings. Just see the uh, constituent fibers of the diaphragm. So this is the right crust of the diaphragm. You can see this right crust and the fibers, hmm, the medial most fibers of right crust of the diaphragm, they form a, a, a loop like a structure, encircle the opening of the esophagus where right and left vagus now are also present. So they form an encircle. So there will be the medial fibers of the right crust run to the left to encircle the esophagus okay so we will we'll encircle the esophagus all these fibers they will insert on the trilobed central tendon now this is the central tendon and all these fibers they are coming from vertebral costal or the external origin they will insert on the central tendon which has the three lobes okay said to be leaflets or lobes this is anterior and these are right and the left lateral lobes hmm. so anterior is a triangular while the right and left lobe they are just projection like a tongue okay they are just projecting so these are the central they will ultimately insert onto the trilobe tongue okay trilobe i'm sorry central tendon now the, we come to the insertion of these all fibers external costal and vertebral fibers the central tendon lies below the pericardium now in this diagram i said that this part is the central tendon and this lies below the pericardium this is the heart in the thoracic cavity mm, this is surrounded by the visceral and then this is the fibrous pericardium so this central tendon is attached to the fibrous tendinous above that means hmm, the central tendon is giving attachment to the fibrous tendon on its superior surface on its superior surface okay hmm. now this uh, central tendon as i said consists of three leaflets that is it has three lobes trilobar the right and left leaflets are tongue sab okay we have just seen the right and the left leaflets are this portion they are tongue sab projection while that of the anterior or the apex of the triangle is directed towards the sternum argipite process it is directed towards the sternum okay it is triangular in shape hmm? forming the apex of this so this is that central tendon where all the fibers they will come and attach now central tendon as usual is made up of the collagen fibers okay and as i said that on its superior surface hmm, it is fusing with that of the, the parietal layer of the pericardium okay parietal layer of the so this concave depression here between the right and the left dome of the diaphragm okay gives attachment to the fibrous pericardium hmm? fibrous parietal pericardium okay let us i hope that you have understood the origin insertion of the diaphragm which is a musculotendinous partition between the hmm? thoracic and abdominal cavity okay now come to the nerve supply since it is a muscle after origin and insertion we come directly to the nerve supply nerve supply is of two different type motor and sensory now the motor is biphrenic nerve okay this is taking origin in neck from c3 to c5 spinal segment which is the root value of phrenic nerve. Stimulation of phrenic nerve leads to the contraction of the muscles of diaphragm, which takes place 
during the inspiration okay so the air is sucked in okay air so the diaphragm goes down during the inspiration the diaphragm goes down so that the cavity thoracic pleural cavity increases in size and negative pressure is generated because of the going down of the uh, diaphragm or when diaphragm descends down towards abdominal cavity so the air is sucked in into the lungs okay so in this way the diaphragm is the major muscle for the inspiration or for the inhalation of the air okay it is the major muscle so that's why the it is the its motor supply is said to be from phrenic now from phrenic now sensory supply of the diaphragm it is again by two nerves by phrenic that means phrenic is a mix mix now it is also carrying the sensory fibers as well as motor fiber and which part of the diaphragm is having sensory innervation it is central part of the diaphragm is innervated by that of the mm, phrenic sensory nerve while that of the peripheral part is not innervated here which is close to the costal margin and the vertebral margin okay it is not supplied by the phrenic but it is supplied by the lower six intercostal nerves lower six means from c6 to 11 t11 now they all are lying into the intercostal spaces see this these are intercostal and then hmm, they will give the fibers to supply this so from thoracic 6 to the thoracic 11 Ah, uh, spinal now they are supplying the sensory fibers on peripheral part, okay? Mm, but they don't supply the motor uh, fibers to the diaphragm. They only supply the sensory part. Mm, so don't get confused. Only the motor supply for the diaphragm is only from phrenic, but sensory is from both intercostal lower six and that of the uh, I mean to say uh, phrenic central part by phrenic now. blood supply of the diaphragm now this diaphragm is supplied by intercostal artery because we along with the intercostal now there are the lower six intercostal arteries which are gaining the which are the branches from the thoracic descending aorta thoracic aorta they are giving branches to that of the diaphragm posterior intercostal okay posterior intercostal arteries from c6 to t11 then second source of the blood is from musculophrenic branch of the internal thoracic musculophrenic branch me i'm one which uh, takes its origin just behind the fifth intercostal or sixth intercostal space hmm? just lateral to the margin of the sternum that is where the uh, thoracic i mean to say internal thoracic artery or internal mammary artery divides into two superior epigastric and musculophrenic this is the this branch musculophrenic sends the fibers i mean to say sends the arteries to the intercostal lower intercostal spaces okay this is in addition to the posterior intercostal arteries okay this goes from anterior side posterior intercostal it comes from posterior side in the space intercostal space then there is a third source of the blood and this is the inferior phrenic from abdominal aorta okay when abdominal aorta will come from this arch here see this diagram here this is the median arcuate ligament as soon as this aorta will come into the abdominal cavity by passing deep to the median arcuate ligament lying a little left on to the body of the l1 vertebra here itself it will give two branches okay on lateral side hmm? on right side as well as on to the left side which will ascend up and this is a pair of the phrenic uh, arteries okay so these are inferior phrenic hmm? arteries which will supply the abdomen they are very thin i'm say very uh, minute okay not that much blood can be supplied but they are there so this is the third source of the and especially the right and left crust muscles they are supplied by this hmm, inferior phrenic arteries 
Okay, this completes the nerve supply, blood supply, and venous drainage will be following these arteries. Hmm? So it will go to the internal thoracic vein. It will go to the azygous uh, vein, right? Hmm? Through the lumbar veins. Hmm? This will be the different, okay, and intercostal veins. Now coming to the action of the uh, this. Uh, uh, I mean to say diaphragm. Let us see the what is it? one of the action we have already discussed. It is the chief muscle, main muscle of respiration. And when the muscle contracts due to motor stimulation, the diaphragm goes down, okay, towards the abdominal cavity. So the pleural cavity get enlarged. So negative pressure is generated in pleural cavity and air is sucked in the lungs, okay, through the trachea. So this is a muscle of inspiration, okay, inhalation, okay, see so this is the muscle, so it is a major muscle for the respiration and it is because contraction takes place because of the stimulation of the phrenic nerve. Now if suppose phrenic nerve is not there, it is paralyzed, muscles are paralyzed due to cutting of the phrenic nerve then inspiration is not efficient, okay? Inhalation is not efficient. Second important action is that this is an expulsive uh, muscle when it is used during the act of expulsion, okay? What are those act of expulsions, okay? Uh, this is during micturation, okay? When you are passing the urine, okay, the abdominal muscle contract Okay, so that uh, the intra-abdominal pressure increases. Why intra-abdominal pressure increases during micturation as well as during defecation? Okay, defecation or passing of the stool or the urine. Okay, this intra-abdominal pressure increases, so there is a pressure on the rectum as well as urinary bladder. Similarly, all of a sudden when if you we sneeze, okay, there is a sudden contraction of the you know, muscles like that of the this diaphragm as well as the intercostal muscles and other muscles are also involved in the act of the sneezing, coughing, okay, coughing, in vomiting and in parturation. What is parturation? Parturation. It is the act of expulsion of the fetus from the birth canal through the birth canal at the time of the birth okay so the this muscle is active also during micturation defecation sneezing coughing vomiting and the parturition okay so this completes the origin insertion now supply and action of this muscle which is called as the uh, thoraco abdominal diaphragm let us come to the um, fifth point that is the openings in the diaphragm and then we will take the applied anatomy lastly. So let us see what are the openings in the diaphragm. There are three major openings in the diaphragm for the structures which are passing between the two cavities that is thoracic and the abdominal cavity. Some are coming from thoracic to abdominal, some are going from abdominal to that of the thoracic. Hmm. But there are three major large openings in the this partition. Now let us see there are three major openings. Number one is aortic opening. See this is or opening of the aorta. And this see this here this is the <coughs> <coughs> sorry this is an diagram which shows that the thoracic column okay thoracic column with the concavity forward this is the sternum and gypoid process of the sternum and this is that musculotendinous partition with the convexity upward that is the dome is facing upward diagrammatically and this is the diaphragm okay this is. and there are three opening this is the opening of inferior vena cava this is the opening of the esophagus and and then this is the opening of the aorta. That means from here thoracic aorta will become the abdominal aorta. It will come on the front of the, will lie in front of the 12th thoracic vertebral body. 
esophageal opening will lie against the 10th thoracic vertebral body while inferior vena cava opening is against the 8th thoracic vertebral body so let us come to these three openings once you have understood this diagram aortic opening and this is situated at the level of the 12th thoracic vertebra as i said here 12th thoracic is the aorta opening okay level of the 12th thoracic vertebra in this diagram this opening was shown here see this opening was abdominal of aorta see this this is the aortic opening see this this is in front of the 12th thoracic vertebral body now this lies behind the median arcuate ligament see this green color arch this is the median arcuate ligament okay so aortic opening is behind the median arcuate ligament but in front of the 12th thoracic vertebra and the shape is rounded that means shape of this opening is almost rounded opening and along with the aorta this opening aortic opening also give passage to two more structure beside the aorta two other structures are passing it is the thoracic duct and the azygous vein in this diagram i have drawn only the hmm, thoracic duct with this blue color see this this blue color structure is the azygous uh, sorry it is the thoracic duct azygous vein will lie still hmm, right to it so three structure will pass through this aortic abdominal aorta i mean say aorta which will become abdominal hmm? it will be the aorta will pass then it is the thoracic duct and then it will be the azygous vein okay it will pass will be the azygous so three structures they pass okay you have known its shape you have known its location and then the structure passing through the aortic opening let us go to the second opening and that is esophageal opening where the esophagus will become continuous down below with that of the stomach after its opening so the esophagus will come here okay let me so this is the esophageal opening at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebra okay this is located at the level see this in this diagram this is that esophagus is here see a little uh, i'm say to the left of the median plane okay so this is suppose pencil indicate the median plane it lies on to the left side okay so this is towards the left side of the median plane and this is located at the level of the 10th thoracic vertebrae in front of the 10th thoracic vertebrae here i had drawn this is the esophageal opening okay now this esophageal opening is uh, it gives passage now beside the esophagus to right and the left vagus uh, trunks okay these are the trunks of the vagus now right and the left vagus trunk right trunk and the left vagus trunk they pass along with that of the esophagus see these two vagus now right and left vagus now so it gives passage to the right and left vagus now plus some minute branches of the left gastric artery they will go upward okay to supply the lower most part of the esophagus they are called as esophageal branch of the left gastric artery i have not drawn here but you can draw this Uh, artery let me write some of these minute branches will go hmm, and these are more on to that of the hmm, it will lie on to the right side these are the esophageal branches of the hmm, left gastric artery hmm, esophageal branches of the left gastric artery right so how many structures are passing esophagus then right and left trunk of the vagus nerve and then esophageal branch of the left gastric artery <coughs> and its shape is oval elliptical see this oval oval or elliptical shape is the esophageal opening in the diaphragm lastly we come to the third major opening and it is the vena cava opening and the vena cava opening lies in the at the level of the 8th thoracic vertebra see here this is the 
एट थोरेसिक वर्टिब्राइ दिस लाइज लाइंग एट द लेवल ऑफ द एट थोरेस बट इट इज लाइंग विद इन द सेंट्रल टेंडर एंड इफ यू पुट इट द मीडियन प्लेन इट लाइज जस्ट लैटरल टू दैट ऑफ द आई मीन से राइट टू दैट ऑफ द मीडियन प्लेन इस ओपनिंग वॉज लेफ्ट टू द मीडियन प्लेन बट द वीना केबल ओपनिंग इज टूवर्ड द राइट टू दैट ऑफ द मीडियन प्लेन सो दिस इज वीना कीवा ओके आई विल जस्ट गिव द ब्लू कलर टू इट so this is the vena cava opening and here is the opening of the other structure which will go along with this uh, vena cava okay this is a um, inferior vena cava is one thing okay plus branches of the right phrenic nerve so this is the branch of the right phrenic nerve which is going along with the inferior vena cava hmm? so this branch of the right phrenic nerve will also go through the vena cava opening which is located at the level of 8th thoracic vertebra now see this opening shape of the opening if you will see the shape of the opening it is a square shape or rectangular in shape vena cava and that of the phrenic nerve right phrenic nerve is going through branches hmm? branches of right phrenic nerve are going some lymphatics may also go through this okay lymphatics may also go through. so these are the three major openings okay which are those major opening inferior vena cava esophagus and aorta and you should note their hmm, level of opening their shape and what are the other structures which are passing along with this three large opening sometimes there is a short note on to the opening of the hmm, this i mean to say op vena cava i mean say opening in the diaphragm let us come to the applied anatomy of this hmm, diaphragm when you will write the applied anatomy of the diaphragm then it is the three major uh, applied anatomy i have chosen three medal of um, i mean say main applied uh, hiatus hernia what is hiatus hernia hernia we know that by this time that it is an abnormal protrusion of the abdominal content okay through any opening normal or abnormal opening so here the stomach that means just below the esophagus what will lie here it will be the lesser curvature of the stomach it will be the greater curvature of the stomach and if the stomach especially the fundic part of the stomach if it goes hmm, inside the uh, thoracic cavity through this esophageal opening then it is called as hiatus hernia got the what is hiatus it is an abnormal protrusion of the stomach or part of the stomach fundus of the stomach hmm, through this esophageal opening into the thoracic cavity this is called as hiatus hernia okay it is called hiatus hernia now almost 1 or 2% of the population suffers from hiatus hernia i myself is having hiatus hernia and because of that there are so many problems takes place sometime and what are the problem are these most important problem is the regurgitation of the food which is present inside the stomach so whatsoever food is there in the stomach chime okay after that means mixing with the gastric juice that may this contents may go into the esophagus okay leading to the esophagitis okay and it is a very uh, i mean to say distressing condition that means acidic is um, this fluid which goes into esophagus up to the oral cavity sometime it goes into the nose also hmm? and this is called as the i mean to say regurgitation okay this is called as regurgitation and with painful condition too so this is i mean to say irritating to the mucous membrane okay of the esophagus to that of the larynx i mean to say the pharynx and to the nasal mucosa if it is going right up to the nasal mucosa so most important complication of the hiatus hernia is the regurgitation some people may get hiccup okay hmm? some people may get dysphagia that means difficulty in the swallowing okay this is because of the hiatus hernia and you know what is hiatus hernia abnormal protrusion of the stomach or part of Uh, the fundus uh, allo 
hmm, inside the opening of the esophagus. Okay, esophageal opening of the diaphragm into thoracic cavity. Now, second condition is the lesion of phrenic nerve. If the phrenic nerve is, I mean to say, damaged, okay, then the diaphragm will not act. Okay, diaphragm. That means contraction of diaphragm will not take place. So this is due to the paralysis, and I mean to say, this will lead to the paralysis of the dome of the diaphragm, and affected dome is pushed upward okay instead of going downward as it goes during the contraction when motor supply is intact it will be pushed upward it will interfere with the respiration okay third condition which may be there it is referred pain okay that means if there is a mm, the branch of phrenic nerve which is coming through the in fear vena keval opening okay and supplying to the under surface of the diaphragm sometimes gets irritated okay irritation due to the infection or due to the accumulation of some okay or infection in this area deep to the diaphragm this may lead to the pain and the pain is then felt okay at the tip of the shoulder okay or in the supraclavicular nerve supply area of the supply of the supraclavicular so the pain may be there in the shoulder region where supraclavicular nerves are supplying why then the pain is in the shoulder region when the problem is there within the diaphragm okay it is on the under surface of the diaphragm due to irritation it is because the supraclavicular nerve and the Phrenic now they have the same root value C3, C4, C5. Okay, C3, 4, and 5. Same segment of the spinal cord is supplying to both the structure, that is to the shoulder as well as to the diaphragm. Sensory supply. I'm okay. I'm talking of sensory. So that's why the refer pain of the irritation of the diaphragm is seen into the amyxis. Felt in the shoulder region. Now this completes the three applied anatom anatomy of the diaphragm: hiatus hernia and the phrenic nerve paralysis and the referred pain to the shoulder joint. Thank you very much for watching this video.